As I'm walking through the area, I pick up movement. I see signs of the phenomenon, the aberration, the diffusion being retransmitted. And, uh, and those uh, differences give me the opportunity to point my camera in the right place. I'm not, I'm looking for a Bigfoot, obviously, but I'm also looking for the aberration, the optical illusion that is caused when the creatures are present because nothing in the forest causes the optical illusion like these creatures' skin, right? And, uh, and so we're getting a glimpse at how the shadows are actually colored when we view Sasquatch's skin changing color. Here you can see this individual is, uh, has the gray skin and, uh, and he's back in camouflage. Let's take a look at another one that happens to be in the water. This particular guy is extremely difficult to identify. He appears to be in the water and uh, it doesn't appear that he's alone. Uh, but this is the kind of footage that I have to use initially to begin even noticing that individuals are where they are. So from this footage, this individual, I'll be hunting him. We're looking for further shots of that guy. And, uh, and it's a real scary looking creature, man. There's several in there with him. There's a couple of key frames. You can see him there. Um, he's got a very man-like look. Kind of resembles Eddie from Iron Maiden. Pretty nuts, but I'll be looking for him next time I go. So this next series is um, two different creatures. This is one of those huge dragon-like Sasquatch. Uh, they have an incredible amount of soft tissue and just above him is your quintessential Sasquatch. And, uh, and we can see the top of the creature's head, its eyes, its face, uh, some of that uh, coloration that is apparently not a chromatic. This creature, I don't believe, is achromatic. I think it has similar colors to Patty. It's not broadcasting green. It's getting a total like bronze color. And I've literally seen creatures um, with this exact coloration. Uh, as the diffusion was going across their skin, it maintained the greens, the bronze, and when the canopy finally relinquished and the light settled, there was a Sasquatch. He was bronze toned with charcoal brownish colored hair. Uh, he was at my DNA trap. We actually have his DNA in our freezer. Some really great frames of, uh, of this particular type of individual. And, um, and as we go on, we're going to see several different types right we've got that one below it uh, and then we've got this one here and um, there's three or four other ones and we're going to look at those now from the same clip what we're noticing is that when they're at rest they're piled in on top of each other next to each other and that uh, you know they're very close to each other and I think that speaks volumes to how they feel about where they're at and what's going on um, they're banding together um, will it be a tribal reaction I believe so I believe when one decides he's had enough the rest of them are going to come with him and uh, and that's what we see they do they do things together they sit together uh, more than likely they're hunting and eating together um, obviously doing other things there's quite a few of them in here but again we see how the nature of just them laying around with their bodies close to each other their faces pressed up against each other um, our cameras have a great deal of trouble separating these individuals and we get 
frames where they're absolutely incredible. We can see all three individuals, uh, but in real time, you're at a loss. If you don't understand what they look like while they're camouflaged, you could walk right into one and never even know it, right? You'd start smelling something at the last minute. And, uh, and then typically in these situations where we don't understand that this creature is there, they start growling. Uh, sometimes they'll sit there and you can wander around looking for the source of the smell. And as you walk off, you'll hear some cracking or he'll get up and tear off once he's, you know, once you're past his position. Um, we're seeing some really disturbing aspects of their existence where human beings are concerned and our inability to uh, access information that tells us, hey, we're in danger right now. The smell is attributed to these creatures. These sounds along with this smell could mean that this creature's moving in my direction. I should leave the area. These are what we're uncovering some kind of an ancient people that have been here uh, obviously for so long and the bulk of humanity cannot detect them. This should frighten everyone though obviously the creatures have here remained passive so far. Despite their size and obvious uh, superiority in, in all of these situations, we stand there at their mercy. And that's the part that is escaping everyone involved in this subject. Um, that it's not just these little creatures that people are seeing. The creatures you're staring at now are between 14 and 15 feet tall based on the size of the trees right there. I know, I've been there. We're looking at enormous creatures all on the same bank at the same time. Those creatures we're reviewing are just to the top of this hill, to the left of this creature. Same clip, sitting there with him right now. There's at least four or five identified in this footage alone. 